An outing at the dog park is a great way to start the day, or to end the day, or at any time of the day. And I think we humans may learn more than we might expect from our best friends if we watch what they do at the dog park. Now, from a dog's eye view of things, coming to the dog park is great fun. You get to jump in the car with your pack, who you love and vigorously protect and defend. And then you get out of the car and meet other dogs who have arrived with their pack, whom they love and vigorously defend and protect. And if the dogs maintain the attitude of defending and protecting and being territorial, things can go sideways. But if they take just a little bit of time to get to know each other, to get a couple of good sniffs in, then they want to get to play and to run and even form kind of a new kind of a pack. And I think that we human beings can learn something from our dogs. We humans who are so into all kinds of oppositions with each other these days, so tied into our identities and our own packs, that it can be difficult to have a conversation with someone who is on the other side. But if we take the time, maybe not to sniff, but to use what I'm going to call a cultural artifact, we may be able to build a bridge to someone else that creates a new kind of an us. Now, let me say something that might seem a little bit surprising. There's a lot of talk these days of us and them, and that us versus them is a really bad thing, and us versus them is very problematic. But there's a difference between us and them and us versus them. We all need an us. We do, we need an us. We need our family, we need our friends, we need people that we can go to when we're in need. We need people that we can celebrate with. And one of the ways we know who our us is, is that there is someone outside of that group, of them. That's not problematic. That's just kind of a natural thing that we fall into. Us and them is not a problem. Us versus them, can be a big problem, particularly when that versus becomes dehumanizing and even demonizing. So how do we get out of demonizing someone just because they are a them? Well, I think our dogs give us some clues of how we do that, but I think that we humans can use these cultural artifacts that I talk about to build these kinds of bridges. Well, let me give you an example. When I was in graduate school at Northwestern University in the Chicago area, I had a professor who was an experimental psychologist, Dave Messick. And Dave liked to use the example of two people in Illinois, one from downstate Illinois, one from the Chicago area, who might be totally opposed to each other on all kinds of social and political issues. But then two seconds later, can be shoulder to shoulder cheering for the Chicago Cubs. Now, as someone who grew up in downstate Illinois, lived in Chicago for 10 years, married a Chicago girl, and I'm a lifelong Chicago Cubs fan, this really resonated with me. I mean, this was true. I understood this. I lived this every day. But it's not just my own little story. Nelson Mandela recognized the same thing. When he became president of South Africa, he used rugby, another sport, as a way to try to find harmony with the groups that were otherwise vigorously at odds with each other. And you know, the thing of it is that when you create this new kind of an us, even if you disagree still with that other side, it's harder to be uncivil to them. There's something that they are part of you now. You are part of their us and they are part of your us. So you may disagree, but on a more civil way. I remember years ago that I was singing in a, in a choir and there was an alto that I disagreed with on everything, but I still enjoyed having a cup of coffee with her or you know, having a, a donut at the break or something like that. And even though I still disagreed with her and her with me, I was more willing to listen to her because we had formed a new kind of a small pack, a new kind of an us. And so if we form these new kinds of us's, that's a way to bridge the us versus them 
that we can find ourselves getting bogged down into. Now let me give you a couple of other examples of how cultural artifacts that we human beings use, sports, music, business, film, literature, these things that we use, how they can build bridges. You might not think of business as being a cultural artifact, but we invented these things and, and businesses is a way for people to come together who otherwise might disagree with each other. I did a consulting gig a long, long time ago for a family business. It was a great family business. It was an industry leader. They had great employee morale. They were very active in their community. They hardly ever got sued. It was just a great business. It was going into their fourth generation of family business ownership. And the problem, which the family shareholders recognized, was that they really hated each other. I mean, they were at each other's throats on all kinds of things, mainly identified in social and political issues. And they heard me give a speech and they decided that they would hire me to come in and help them resolve their issues. Clearly, they wanted me to side with them as opposed to the other side. Of course, I didn't do that. What I did instead was I had them write a story, a story, a story which is the basis of, of literature, of film, of many lyrics, a story that they thought was inspiring about them, about their business. And then we sat down on a very painful weekend and we read through all of them. And it transformed the company. The people still disagreed with each other on all kinds of social and political issues. But they heard each other's story. And they were able to appreciate each other's story. Because they realized that that was a human being who sincerely had beliefs and things that were meaningful to them. And so even though they didn't change, what they believed in, they were able to appreciate the story that the other person had. Let me give another example of the ways in which our cultural artifacts help us to talk about difficult issues. In this case, it's about how dogs help us talk about religion. By the way, I know that dogs are not a cultural artifacts, but making them into pets does make them into cultural artifacts. So I've written a lot of books over the years but one of them that I wrote that I was never able to get published was a book called The Afterlife of Dogs. What happened was about 15 years or so ago, our wonderful old English sheepdog Scooby died. And my then six-year-old daughter said to me, Daddy, where does Scooby go now? I thought this could make for an interesting book to survey what spiritual traditions around the world and throughout history have said about what happens to a dog after it dies. Well, in the process of interviewing a lot of people for that book, I found something that was really very interesting to me. Think of it this way. If you were to sit down with someone and talk to them about your spiritual traditions and to say, well, here's Minnie. Minnie seems interested in the afterlife of dogs. Are you interested in that, Minnie? Well, hold on here for a second. So if you were to talk to somebody about your religious beliefs and what happens to a person after they die, they may recoil because that's not polite conversation. That's not something that we talk about these days, our religious traditions. On the other hand, time and time again, when I would talk to someone and say, do you know what happens to a dog after it dies according to whatever spiritual tradition we were talking about? They would always lean forward and they would say, no, I don't and they were willing to listen and learn a little bit more about that spiritual tradition that they didn't know anything about before. And it created a new kind of an awareness, a new kind of a knowledge. And it happened only because the dogs gave us the safe space to be able to have that conversation. So let me give you a couple of final examples before I give my charge to you. First of all, there was a wonderful film that came out 15, 20 years ago called Joyeux Noel, another cultural artifact, film. It depicted the World War I truce between German, French, and Scottish soldiers on Christmas Eve. They had been fighting each other. They're in the trenches, killing each other on a daily basis for months. But on Christmas Eve, they came out of their trenches onto the killing fields and sang together. They played soccer together. They had a religious service together. They traded with each other. They even realized that they shared ownership of a cat 
who went back and forth between the two sides. So cats, cats too, I'm not exclusive to dogs. Cats can be cultural artifacts too that help us find common ground. But they came out of their trenches in order to be, and found a way to be able to find a common ground with each other. Or let me give you one other example. Some of you may have heard of this. It won an ESPY award here a few years ago. There was a women's college softball game in the Pacific Northwest. And one of the batters hit the ball over the fence. And as she was circling the bases, she slipped and fell and broke her ankle. Now, in order to score a home run, you have to touch all the bases, including home plate. But she couldn't continue because of her broken ankle. So her teammates asked the umpire, can we help her around the bases? And the umpire said, there's a rule against that. You can't do that. Whereupon the other team said, what if we help her around the bases? And the umpire said, well, there's no rule against that. And the other team put her on their shoulders and took her around the bases to score a run against themselves. So here's my challenge to you. Is there someone on the other side that you would be willing to put on your shoulders and to take them around the bases, even if it means a point against you or in baseball, a run against you? Or is there someone that you would be willing to come out of the trenches for in order to be able to celebrate with a cultural artifact and find a common ground, a new kind of an us, to make them not a demonized them, but an M that you have an us relationship with? So when would be a good time for you all to do that? Start of the day, end of the day, any time of the day. And if you get stuck of how to do that, what it looks like, come out here to the dog park. Our best friends will teach you how. <laughs>